Hello and welcome back to Deck Pilot episode 20. And we're taking green, yellow, haste combo for a spin on the ladder today. And man, I'm a little anxious to play this deck because I need to be on I need to be in top form to be able to pull off this one turn kill. But I, hopefully you guys will learn something. I'll try my best to explain all my decisions and why I'm doing certain plays because I feel this is a deck that you get better at with practice for sure. And not only that, I felt like Deck Doctor didn't explain everything enough because I felt like words and images weren't enough to cover this deck. You really need to see it in action to get a good grasp of how it performs. So without further ado, let's get into the matches and see how I do. All right, our first match going against GMP. First time playing against him. So I'll see how things go. And this is a full mulligan. Like I said, in Deck Doctor, you're just looking for very specific cards. I ended up getting Doomsday back. That's really strange. All right, so forest in the center, and then we pass. Very simple opener. You don't really do much in the opening turns other than build land towards your opponent. Now, I'm going to have to adjust my land placement and my decision making based on how my opponent plays. Like, counter rushing can be an issue sometimes. And this hand is kind of clunky, actually. I, I want to find an Oakland and a Haste creature uh, really quickly. But I basically have five turns where I just play land every turn and just draw cards. So that, that's fine. Um, not too much going on right now. If I pick up Earthcraft, I'll be much happier. We'll see if he sets up the diamond. No, no diamond set up. Okay, so he does have Explore. So he looks like he is actually going for the diamond. And this uh, wood elemental could be a problem in the future. But luckily, I do have the Choking Sand ready. And there's a follower, so I do have a way to produce aggressive land now I could go for a forest um, but then we could just see double neutral come across here or maybe double neutral here then I take a desert or you could go neutral neutral and then I'm kind of in a weird spot and this is what I was talking about during deck doctor you've got to really figure out your turns and where where you want to go and uh, what you get countered by I unfortunately don't have an Earthcraft. Earthcraft would allow me to double neutral this turn and get a desert here. And then all this land blocking would be for nothing. But if you don't have the Earthcraft, uh, things get a little hairy. Now, I could go for a desert. I feel like a desert's fine here. Now, I did say you usually go triple forest. But like, but like I said, it's not as black and white as that. With land development, you do really have to figure out. So... Desert here. I'd play a desert here. I expect maybe a land here, maybe a land here. If this spot doesn't get taken, I can take a desert here. And then I can use the follower as a guy to step on to one of these lands and take control of it. So let's um let's play a desert. Let's get the follower down on in two turns time. Take the aggressive desert. I only need one. You only ever need one aggressive desert, which is fine. And um we'll go from there. Now, very, very much depends what GMP decides to do. Now, this, this, this is interesting. Very interesting. So, I think GMP already knows what's happening, which is fair. You know, he, he, he's doing some pretty decent land blocking tactics. But will it be enough? That's the question. So, I'm going to take the desert and I'm going to play the Oakland, even if it's this far back. Uh, Oakland helps me play around Horsemaster. The one thing Oakland does is it protects you from taking damage. You use it as a chump blocker. It just basically just blocks you, your orb. So it gives you uh, time. Time is a, a very important asset for this style of combo deck because the longer you have to get the resources and theory you need, the more likely you're able to pull off a one turn kill combo. Now, if he doesn't take this spot, that's excellent for me. Absolutely excellent. And then I can just move up. Now, this is an issue. So, he, I guess I could follow her here first and take the desert. I am going to lose a follower, unfortunately. And I currently don't have anything that Oakland will power up. So, that is also another problem. Now, I could just Doomsday, I suppose. But I don't, I don't get the power up. That's my problem. I need this land. I really want this land. I could step back, move out of the way of this axe grinder, move across, play the desert, and then pass. 
So I'm trying to assess, is it worth the risk? Uh, what if, what if he horse masters next turn and I lose my Oakland buff? Basically, this is my last aggressive land, and then I am relying on Wind Soldiers to win me the game. So I'm going to take a risky play. Alternatively, I could use an Elderwood Embrace here to kill this. But again, I'm not... See, I'm not, I'm not um, guaranteeing to draw a card. Alright, so we're, we're, taking, we're taking the riskier line. And we're just stepping back. And hoping this doesn't die. <laughs> and yeah, I'll pass. So we, we throw, we've thrown this follower into the slaughter. He's done his job. He set my aggressive desert. And this will give me an avenue to win the game in the future. Now we'll see if Okie Dokling gets killed. Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he just thinks, well, he's going to get a power up anyway. It doesn't matter. That's that's the, I'm, the mentality I'm hoping for my opponent right now. Well, we'll see. He might just double neutral to close me off. It doesn't matter, actually. That that doesn't matter. It, it's no, it, it's not relevant. Um, as long as I have this land, I'm absolutely fine. Now this gives me opportunity to draw cards, and there is a haste creature. Fantastic. So let's take a draw. Another Oakland. Okay. We'll take the Oakland, and then we'll pass. So we're setting up for a doomsday, and the, both these Oaklands should power up my monk unless I draw another haste creature. I want my opponent to use more Feria before I doomsday because I'm gonna I'm gonna lose all my Feria in the process. Um, I also need to uh, set up another forest, which I'll do I'll do this turn. Cypher's Wrath, excellent. My opponent just used a ton of Feria to set up this Garadan, and it's not gonna matter. I'm just gonna Doomsday, and then I have the Choking Sands for a future Wood Elemental, so this has worked out great for me so far. So let's take the Forest, and then we'll just take the Doomsday. Let's, let, let me give you an idea of how powerful this creature is now. Combined with uh, a Guidance, uh, two Guidance, that pushes me up to 14, 16, 18. I'm one power up or one haste creature away from winning. Because if I can feed this, I gain insane amounts of Feria. And he didn't play it here, which is... Well, it doesn't really matter, to be honest. I, yeah, I've won this. So this should just be should just be GG's. Uh, we'll play the Monk. Move in. So we're, we're kind of banking on drawing another haste creature. But we do have another haste creature, so it's absolutely fine. We'll take the Prayer. We take the Feed. We play the monk, then we go power up, power up, power up, and there you have it! That, that's the deck in a nutshell! <laughs> it just... If your opponent doesn't know how to defend, it's so difficult because you just get one-shotted. One turn kill. So before we go into our next match, let's just take a moment to uh, figure out how our opponent could have played that better. Now I think the misplay that was made by our opponent was making this mountain here instead of going double neutral here. Now, if you remember, my Kaleem's follower moved from this land here to set up this aggressive desert. So I went from here to here. Now, if this was double neutral, it doesn't matter. These, This is the only spot which matters. Now, you could argue, okay, so I play Follower, I move it here, I play Forest, and then Earthcraft into Desert. Sure. That is that is a good argument to say to not take that land, uh, to not do that play. But you are, you are demanding that I have an Earthcraft to be able to make that line. And at the, at the time, I didn't have it. So it's better to take double neutrals here and not play the Ground Shaker, or just play the Ground Shaker here, um, to protect your land and give me as little avenues and lines of play where I can hit the orb with the monks and the followers. So that was that was the biggest mistake there. I guess overcommitting the Garadan wasn't worth it as well. But like I said, I feel like um, the reason this deck has been so successful for me, I, I climbed from like rank 160 to like 
ranked 25 in one stream. And it was because I, I feel that my opponents didn't know how to counterplay. And hopefully Deck Doctor and these video, this video will help you guys not only play this deck, but be able to counter it. All right, guys, we are back against Bob Ross. I love Bob Ross. I don't want to one. I don't want to one turn kill Bob Ross. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> but I have a happy little tree in hand. Well, it's going to be an unhappy tree for Bob Ross, but yeah, we'll we'll see how Bob does. And we'll take the forest, and we will pass. Oakland feed in the open hand, fantastic. We've also got the explorer as well, so land blocking becomes far more difficult. And this is blue yellow, interesting. So probably expecting some form of twin soul shenanigans. Probably won't matter ultimately, but we'll take another forest and I guess we'll pass. So I've I've spoken to members of the community about Oakland in the blue matchup. Now Oakland can be a bit of a problem. You don't want it to get frogified. You want you lose a lot of value at getting frogified. Which is something I don't like. I feel like I have time here to set up neutrals. Uh, so a good way to avoid land blocking is this. Uh, land blocking did nothing and I'm absolutely fine. Now if the wood element, uh, sorry the water elemental moves down I might Oakland to stop it. I could have actually Oakland this turn to if because if the frogified did come down uh, the water elemental isn't double collecting. There we have it. I don't have uh, any haste creatures in hand, so I don't even know what I'm talking about. You want to have a haste creature in hand, guys. Do not Oakland without it. Now, we get to set up on the well, which I really like. Ah, man. Frogify hurts so much. And this probably doesn't die anytime soon. I don't know. Different players have different feelings about Oakland. I think it's actually fine for me to play Monk this turn, just to start cycling. Prayer, that's nice. Into Wind Soldier. I could potentially Actually no, next turn. Next turn I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna Oakland Doomsday next turn. That's that's really nice. Especially if Bob Ross overcommits here. He's playing the wrong colour. Bob Ross should be playing green, 100 <laughs> percent Oh. Gonna send the Aurora in. Ouch. More cards, please. Empress Command as removal. Great. That's not an Empress Command as well, basically it's not Empress Commander's heal, so I'm totally fine with that. We can plus one Earthcraft, which allows us to set up our last land that we need. Um, we can just set it up here. I think that's fine. And then we go into the Doomsday. So Bob Ross has a lot of area to work with. Um, I might need to win next turn, but I do have Feed the Forest and, and Wind Soldier. So I'm pretty confident that I'm going to do fine. Unless I die this turn, which I doubt it very much. We'll see. I have not seen... We've only seen Water Elemental and Aurora so far. Heals by two. I'm going to go into a Colossus. Now I can heal myself if I feel like I can't win this turn. I have two feeds, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Go in, hit here, drop the prayer, drop the feed, drop the wisdom. Okay, take a draw. That's a follower. I'll take a heal. This should keep us in the match. I, I don't see how um, blue yellow kills me this turn. A wind soldier is ten, double wind soldier, I suppose. But where, where do you put? Where do you get the space to do that? Ah, the good old twin souls block. I like it. So I'm gonna have to use a wind soldier as removal. I do have time. I can just guidance again if I want to. 
Yeah, okay, let's draw again. That's an Oakland. See, I probably have the Wind Soldier now. Actually, I can't play the Oakland. Ah, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I guess I heal this turn and pass. I'm dead to Wind Soldier. I don't like this, but I think this is the best way I, I survive. I, I wanna, I, I'm probably gonna have to Oakland feed next turn. No Wind Soldier? See if he gets greedy and collects. Soul Drain himself? Okay. The problem I... Oh, no, I have two Wind Soldiers now. That's great. The problem I had before is I didn't want Wind Soldier to get hit by the Oakland, but now I have two. It actually makes no difference. Um, so we need to win this turn, 100%. And my follower got hit. Nice. Okay, we're going to collect from here. Push. Play the big follower. Hit face. Play the prayer. Never Oakland, not what we want. Yeah, that didn't quite work out how I wanted it to. Look, you, you can see how important Feed the Forest is to pulling off this combo now. If I had to Feed the Forest, um, I could feed this. I could play Wind Soldier into Elderwood. Oh, I could feed this. I could play Oaklin. Choking Sands my Oaklin to get my follower powered up, and that would have been lethal. So it just, go, it just goes to show, like, Feed the Forest is super important in being able to finish these matches off. Uh, but well played, um, yeah, well played to Bob Ross. Happy little trees do not prevail this time. And yeah, we'll just let him finish us off. I don't think there was anything different I could have done. It's hard to say, it's very hard to judge sometimes. It's, it's a complicated deck. Uh, but yeah, good games to Bob Ross. And I have been degraded in rank, unfortunately. But we will go into the next match. And let's see if I can win that one. All right, we have a rematch against Bob Ross. And let's see if I can uh, take a win this time. He's currently uh, defeated me. And I need my revenge. I need to one turn kill Bob Ross. He needs to respect the power of happy little trees. Let's give Bob Ross a greens. But let's see, I, is Bob Ross interested? Yeah, Bob Ross is, Bob Ross is kind, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy. So now, now Bob Ross knows exactly what he's being played against. And I'm curious to see how land will be developed. Um, land is going to be very important when um, deciding how to defend against this deck. Now, the Explore is available. So a diamond can be set up with uh, just neutrals or an elemental. And we can see, yep. Ah, is this a diamond? No, not quite a diamond, but get in there. Unfortunately, Earthcraft is going to allow me to push very aggressively um yeah let's do it we'll go double neutral into earthcraft take desert go into earthcraft take the desert Now, if this frog moves forward, I might play Oakland next turn. But we'll see. We, we I feel we can pass. It'd be nice to pick up a monk, I think. Getting a monk would be really good. Am, it looks like he's going to land block instead. That's fair. And that is going to be more battle toads. So battle toads are going to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> because they're just, just annoying. Just annoying creatures I have to invest resources into. Uh, I feel I can take a draw here. Try and get that doomsday pretty soon. I can't draw a card next turn, unfortunately, because I will overdraw unless I play something like 
the Oakland, uh, which is what I plan to do. And this is actually not looking like the same deck that we played against. It's actually looking like it's just mono blue. Sweet, I don't have to develop land now. So let's do this. Nope. Nope. So let's play Oakland. I could feed it, but I'm not that concerned. Uh, the biggest fear right now is Frogify, but I don't know. I don't know how relevant it'll be. I guess we'll see as the rest of the match goes on and it comes to its conclusion. If this gets Frogified, how sad am I really going to be? I guess I could feed it to guarantee that I get the power up. Maybe, maybe I have to. Yeah, let's do it. Let, let's feed this guy. Let's guarantee the power up and then we'll pass. And the awkward thing is, um, yeah, the, what's kind of awkward here is all these toads. Very annoying. Oh, that makes things a little easier, depending if he doesn't play anything. Oh, oh that's sad. Okay, so we just need Doomsday. 100% Doomsday now, going forward uh, to stop these taunts. Cover in a forest. Lots of lots of great land blocking going on here from Bob Ross. Hey, that's a doomsday. Is there any value I can gain before I doomsday? Not really, unfortunately. I'm just gonna have to probably doomsday and get on with it. And then I can wind soldier the other Imperial Guard, but I am gonna be behind inferior, unfortunately. It's a shame I can't It's a shame I didn't draw an Oakland, for example, and I could wait a turn and then I could um Doomsday as a follow-up. I can take a land at least. Uh, I could I could desert here actually. And this gives me a wind soldier line. So I can Yeah, a desert there is actually pretty decent. So like I said in my video, like the wind soldiers are not restricted by the land block strategies as much as the other haste creatures because they have a, a high charge range. So establishing a desert in like a spot like that is pretty good. Uh, it just gives you another avenue of attack. The problem is Bob Ross has a lot of Feria to work with. Another library. That's fair. That might be it. I have Wind Soldier plus one Kaleem's Prayer. That's, that's pretty good. And we're gonna see a Colossus start making its way towards me to try to apply some pressure. Oh, feed the forest. It's beautiful. Alright, let's do it. Okay, that kind of sets us up for next turn. We have another Wind Soldier if needed to clear another Taunter, which is really nice, uh, because that allows us to play, um, allows us to hit Orb, gain Fairy off the Prayer, then play the Monk, and then attack, and then, um, yeah, be able to feed the forest. So it's gonna actually use the command as a way to stop me. And it looks like maximum aggression has been applied here. I am on 10 health. <laughs> it's very, very easy to, for me to die, but I should be able to win this turn. Let's see if I can do it. So I play the monk. I have another haste creature, so I don't need to power it up straight away. So let, let's start off with the monk. This should should be lethal. Without a doubt. Yeah, this is lethal. Easy peasy. Oh, and another, another feed to go with it. So I can just like double buff this. I buff again, plus one, hit, feed, play. Yeah, yeah. So feed. And then into the Wind Soldier for the win, and there you have it. So, a very different game there. Um, the, I, was, I wasn't applied pressure quick enough. I think that was the problem. I feel that Bob went too defensive. And the Doomsday has obviously made a big difference and how that matchup played out as well. If I didn't draw that Doomsday, I would have not been able to do much. I would just had a, a handful of cards. I might have to start removing stuff with the Wind Soldiers. 
which is not optimal, but the Doomsday really uh, saved me then and allowed me to get that one turn kill. That wraps up this episode of Deck Pilot. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something about playing this list and defending against it. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a subscribe if you'd like to keep up to date of when my content goes live. If you haven't checked it already, go to the hub, theory.com slash the hyphen hub for all the latest decks, articles and guides from myself and the community. So until next time guys, take care and enjoy Green Yellow Combo.